Welcome back to Ophthalmology for undergraduates and postgraduate beginners. Lacrimal system is one of the important systems to be examined in ophthalmology. Lacrimal system is very very important because nowadays dryness of the eyes as well as watering from the eyes and discharge from the eyes are frequently seen. What are the parts of the lacrimal system? It is having a secretory part, it is having a drainage part. The secretory part is having several glands in the eye, but the major gland is the lacrimal gland situated just below the roof of the orbit on the temporal side. It is actually supratemporal to the eyeball. From there, the tear fluid is being secreted through several ducts, it reaches the conjunctival sac, it moisturizes the surface of the eye, after moisturizing it cleanses the surface, so many dust particles are coming into our eyes, it cleans the surface, goes towards the medial canthus, in the medial canthus already I have told, there is a structure called as caruncle with hair follicles, all the dust particles are attracted by this hair follicles in the caruncle and that is being pushed out of the eye like a discharge. Normally we see the discharge in the early morning or whenever we sleep for a long time. Only the water is being pushed into the lacrimal drainage system. How it is being pushed into the lacrimal drainage system? We have the orbicularis oculi muscle which is closing the eyes. Whenever we are closing the eyes, the orbicularis oculi muscle acts as a pump to pressurize the lacrimal sac, this is a lacrimal sac, to collapse. Once we open the eyes, the pressure over the lacrimal sac is relaxed. So, the lacrimal sac expands, so it acts like an ink pillar sucking the fluid from the conjunctival sac through the punctum, through the vertical canaliculus, through the horizontal canaliculus, through the common canaliculus into the sac itself. Next time when you close the eyes, what happens? The orbicularis oculi muscle presses on this lacrimal sac and pushes whatever fluid that is being collected there into the nasolacrimal duct, into the inferior meatus of the nose. After going into the inferior meatus of the nose, what happens? This is absorbed by the nasal mucosa into the bloodstream. This is how the fluid, that is a tear fluid, is flowing across the eye and it is going back into the circulation. Let us see about the abnormalities of the lacrimal secretory system. The lacrimal secretory system has many glands but as I told this major lacrimal gland is situated below the roof of the orbit on the temporal side. So how to examine this lacrimal gland? You have to just palpate it supratemporal to the eyeball just below the superior orbital margin and look for any mass or swelling. If there is any mass or swelling in that region, then we have to evaluate to find out why it is swollen there. Next thing is, whenever there is a swelling of the lacrimal gland there, what will happen is, it will push the eyeball down and in. So, there may be displacement of the eyeball also. That also we can observe. Next, coming to the functional problems of the lacrimal glands, there may be an increased secretion of the lacrimal gland, usually it is due to emotions. Next is due to irritation or itching of the eyes caused by infections in the conjunctival sac, infections of the cornea, foreign body in the conjunctiva, foreign bodies in the cornea. Pollen grains or dust particles causing allergic reactions in the eye. Decreased secretion usually we see in 
aging patients. As age increases, most of the glands in our body start to decrease their secretions. It may be due to connective tissue disorders like rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, polyarthritis nodosa, vigenous granulomatosis, all those things affecting this gland along with the other glands in our body. How to find a dry egg? How to diagnose a dry egg? Two simple tests. One is called as the marginal tear strip. What is this marginal tear strip? So we have the lower lid margin which is touching the conjunctiva. When you observe at the position where the lid is touching the conjunctiva, you can see a meniscus of tear fluid. It can be clearly seen with the slit lamp. Usually that meniscus of tear fluid will be between 0.25 mm to 0.5 mm in thickness. If the meniscus is less than 0.25 millimeters, then it indicates there is some amount of decreased tear fluid secretion and there is dryness. The second test to diagnose a dry eye is Schirmer's test. What is the Schirmer's test? You have a Schirmer tree strip. That strip is having multiple marks for 0 mm, 5 mm, 10 mm, 15 mm, 20 mm so that strip is kept in the lower fornix the tip of the strip is kept in the lower fornix and you ask the patient to keep the eyes open or close whatever it is and you wait for 5 minutes what will happen is whatever tear fluid that is there in the congenital sac will be absorbed by this tear strip and this strip will become wet. If the wetness exceeds 15 millimeters, then the lacrimal secretion is normal. If the wetness is less than 15 millimeters, the lacrimal secretion is poor. Severe dry eye is if the mark is below 5 millimeters, moderate is below 10 millimeters. Mild is below 15 millimeters. So depending upon the amount of wetness of this Schirmer strip, we can say whether there is dryness, how severe it is. Another test done to diagnose dry eye is T butt test. What is this T butt? Tear film breakup time. We have to instill one drop of fluorescein into the conjunctival sac. Ask the patient not to close his eyes and observe his eyes under the slit lamp. The tear film normally it will take more than 10 seconds to break up. If the tear film breaks up in less than 10 seconds, it is diagnostic of dry eyes. Now let us see about the abnormalities in the lacrimal drainage system. Usually what will be the abnormality in the lacrimal drainage system? There will be incomplete or improper drainage of the tear fluids from the conjunctival sac. So what will happen? Excess amount of tear fluid will collect in the conjunctival sac leading to outpouring of the fluid. It may dribble down over the face. That is called as epiphora. Watering due to obstruction in the lacrimal drainage system is called as epiphora. Watering due to excessive secretion by the lacrimal gland itself is called as hyperlacrimation. That is the difference between the two. Coming to the lacrimal drainage system abnormalities, you can usually see the abnormality in a childhood stage. That is in the first year of life. Tear fluid usually starts getting secreted by the lacrimal gland only after 3 months of age. Because it is getting secreted only late, what will happen? The lacrimal drainage system does not have any function up to that. So they remain collapsed. When the tear glands starts to secrete the fluid, suddenly this collapsed lacrimal drainage system may not open. So what will happen in a child, there will be watering from the eyes, 
there may be infection in the collected air fluid in the congenital sac leading to discharge also so usually we recommend sac massage for young children to avoid this physiological obstruction due to collapse to make it function once again coming to the adults the adults the lacrimal drainage system may not function properly due to two reasons one is physiological another is due to obstruction what is physiological already i told that the orbicularis oculi muscle is making the lacrimal sac to function like a ink pillar to draw the fluid from the congenital sac and push it into the nose if the orbicularis oculi muscle is weak in elderly people the function may be affected there may be some laxity in the lid leading to failure of this pump system next is obstruction obstruction can occur due to any inflammation in the lacrimal drainage pathway leading to stricture formation or it may be a formation of stones in the lacrimal drainage system obstructing the drainage let us see how to find out where is the obstruction what are the tests that are being done let us see how to find out the problem in the naso lacrimal drainage system the common test that is being done is the roplas test regurgitation on pressure over the lacrimal sac this is usually done by the undergraduate students while examining the patient or in the examination or it is done frequently in the clinical settings what we do is we keep the tip of the index finger over the lacrimal sac lacrimal sac is situated between the medial canthus and the root of the nose so in that position you have to keep the tip of the finger and we have to keep the lower eyelid little bit open using the thumb and you give pressure over the sac and look for any regurgitation through the lacrimal punctum if there is a regurgitation then it indicates there is collection of fluid in the lacrimal sac due to obstruction in the naso lacrimal duct leading to regurgitation next is syringing test commonly done in opd settings we use a cannula for syringing normal saline through the naso lacrimal punctum so we inject the normal saline into the naso lacrimal punctum and if the patient feels flow of fluid into the oropharynx and he swallows then the drainage is good the patient says i am not feeling any fluid coming into the nose or in the oropharynx and all the fluid regurgitates back regurgitates back through the same punctum then there is an obstruction in the common canaliculus if the regurgitation is through the opposite punctum then there is a obstruction in the naso lacrimal duct the fluid goes into the sac or it comes back through the common canaliculus and it comes back to the upper punctum so how to differentiate where is obstruction using syringing test i have told here the next test is the dye disappearance test usually we do in a young child we instill one drop of fluorescein into the congenital sac and look for the disappearance time of the dye from the congenital sac usually the dye will disappear in 2 minutes you may ask if the child cries all the fluorescein may come out usually it is done in a cooperative child the next thing is jones test what is this jones test frequently asked in the examination it can be practically done also but we rarely do it instill fluorescein dye into the congenital sac and you give a wisp of cotton to the patient to touch the nostril every 15 seconds to look for the staining of the wisp of cotton if the wisp of cotton stains with the dye then the flow is good usually 
the cotton wisp will get stained within 5 minutes. If it does not stain within 5 minutes, then Jones test 1 is said to be negative. Then we go for Jones test 2. Now we syringe normal saline into the punctum and we look for staining of this wisp of cotton in the nose. If while syringing this cotton gets stained with this fluorescent dye, then there is a partial obstruction in the lacrimal drainage system. That is why the fluid has not come down naturally, it comes, out, comes down only due to syringing. The next thing is probing of the lacrimal drainage system. How to find out where is, there is an obstruction in the lacrimal drainage system? The probe is passed through the canaliculus and we have to see whether there is a hard stop or soft stop. If there is an obstruction in the nasolacrimal duct, this probe will pass up to the lacrimal sac. The lacrimal sac is situated in the lacrimal bone. So, there is only a layer of lacrimal sac between the bone and the probe. So, you feel a hard stop or a hard hitting against the lacrimal bone to the probe. That is called as hard stop. Suppose if there is an obstruction in the common canaliculus, what will happen? There is a layer of sac and there is a common canaliculus in between the lacrimal bone and the probe. So if it goes and stops there, there is some cushioning between the probe and the lacrimal bone that will lead to a soft stop. That way we can find out there is obstruction in the canaliculus. So these are some of the tests. We have other tests like shintigraphy where the radio opaque substance is syringed into the sac and we take x-rays to find out where there is obstruction. Thank you.